new high-resolution images of the Sun's surface. Scientists with the help of the Daniel K. and EA Solar Telescope have taken new pictures of the surface of the Sun. The images show stunning detail in sunspots, plasma motions and agitated convection cells. Thanks to them, researchers hope to better understand the processes that take place on the surface of our star. Located on the Hawaiian island of Maui, the Daniel K. Inuye Solar Telescope, DKIST, is the most modern and powerful solar observatory. It is the largest terrestrial telescope for observing the Sun and boasts great capabilities. The advanced optics of the telescope with a 4-meter mirror allows you to capture even such a sunspot with unprecedented detail. The telescope can observe our star in the visible to near-infrared range and enables high-resolution observations. The first observation cycle has recently been completed. Taking the opportunity, scientists have released new high-resolution images of the Sun. The images focus on the photosphere, a region commonly referred to as the Sun's surface. They show areas that appear calm as well as regions that are more active. Scientists study the surface of the Sun in depth to learn about the processes taking place on it. The DKIST images highlight the telescope's ability to record unprecedented details about the Sun, helping scientists better understand the Sun's magnetic field and details about geomagnetic storms. The observatory allows you to observe details in the photosphere with a diameter of about 20 kilometers. The new images from DKIST show a variety of structures on the star's surface. This includes sunspots. They appear as darker areas. Spots are temporary, blemishes, on the surface of the sun where the magnetic fields are extremely strong. They appear darker than the surrounding areas because of their relatively lower temperatures. The sunspot is cooler than the rest of the sun's surface, but still extremely hot by human standards. Its temperature is about 4000 K. The size of the spots can vary. Several are about the size of the Earth, or larger. Sunspots are related to solar activity. The more sunspots, the more active the sun is. Solar minimum, i.e. the time of least activity during its 11-year cycle, our star reached in December 2019. Maximum solar activity for the current cycle is expected in mid-2025. Sunspots are also associated with solar flares and coronal mass ejections, which can affect life on Earth. Powerful streams of charged particles hitting the Earth's magnetic field can disrupt the operation of power grids, disrupt communications, GPS navigation, air travel and the functioning of satellites. They can also be a real threat to astronauts in space. The surface of the sun in the images may look a bit like popcorn. Each of the seeds is a convection cell, where hot plasma rises in the center, then moves to the edge, and as it cools, it falls back into the sun's interior. Each such seed is about 1,500 kilometers in diameter. Above the photosphere is the chromosphere, one of the layers of the sun's atmosphere. It lies between the photosphere and the transition layer and the corona. The chromosphere extends from an altitude of about 500 kilometers to about 2,000 kilometers. Its lower limit is set by the minimum temperature in the sun's atmosphere, i.e. 440K. At the border of the transition layer, the temperature of the chromosphere already reaches 25,000 K. Sometimes this layer of the sun's atmosphere is filled with darker brush stroke like threads or hairs of plasma. The diameter of these fibers is usually in the range of 200 to 450 kilometers. Scientists don't know how these threads are formed. 
but they are plentiful and are fairly reliable indicators of the direction of the Sun's chaotic magnetic field. Work on the DKIST Observatory began in 2013 and was scheduled to be completed in 2021. But the COVID-19 pandemic has slightly changed the work schedule. The observatory is still in the startup phase, but is slowly reaching full operational capacity. A new solar telescope could help better predict solar weather. It adds a whole set of new tools to study solar activity, in particular magnetic fields. Scientists hope that data from DKIST will help to understand the mechanisms of these fascinating solar phenomena. This in turn can help to understand larger phenomena, for example, the internal dynamics of the Sun and what drives solar cycles. Full resolution images can be viewed and downloaded at the National Science Foundation website. People over 60 years of age have the largest share of greenhouse gas emissions. Research on the carbon footprint of households in different age groups in 27 countries of the European Union, Norway, Great Britain, the USA, Australia and Japan shows that people over 60 have the largest share in greenhouse gas emissions and it reaches nearly 33%. The analyses conducted by scientists from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology NTNU, examined greenhouse gas emissions in different age groups in 2005 to 2015. The analyses covered the 27 EU countries, Norway, the UK, the US, Australia and Japan. These studies show that the least concern about greenhouse gas emissions is the elderly, over 60 years of age. In 2005, these people accounted for 25% greenhouse gas emissions, but in 2015 this number increased to almost 33%. According to research published in the journal Nature Climate Change, older people used to be frugal. The generation that experienced World War II was careful how they used resources. The new elders are different, says NTNU's Edgar Hertwich. The post-war generation of baby boomers are the new elders. They have different consumption patterns than the quiet generation that was born between 1928 and 1945. Today's seniors spend more money on homes, energy use and food, he adds. In 2005, the over-60 age group was responsible for lower emissions than the 30 to 44 and 45 to 59 age groups. In 2015, seniors exceeded the level of 30 to 44 year olds and were at the same level as 45 to 59 year olds. This work shows that seniors account for a growing share of greenhouse gas emissions in all 32 countries studied. Haran Zheng of NTNU believes that the most important message from this study is to make politicians aware that an aging population makes it harder to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Senior people's consumption habits are more rigid, admits Zheng pointing out that a good example is the large apartments occupied by seniors, even after their children have moved out. Generations of baby boomers have a significant impact on the climate, in addition to the fact that those from the 50s and 60s are reaching or approaching senior age. The average life expectancy is also increasing. The elderly population in the 32 countries covered by the NTNU study will double between 2019 and 2050. Compared to other age groups, emissions from older people tend to be more local. Younger age groups consume more imported goods, clothing, electronics and furniture, which lead to emissions in other countries. Income declines in retirement but seniors in developed countries have accumulated value, primarily in real estate. 
Many of them have noticed a big increase in the value of their property. Older people are able to maintain high consumption thanks to their wealth, especially in carbon-intensive areas such as energy. An increasing proportion of this age group lives alone. This does not apply to all countries, but it reflects the general picture, says Shen. When looking at annual emissions by tons per person, Older people in Australia and the US fare worst with 21 tons in 2015. This is almost double the European average. In Europe, seniors from Luxembourg have the highest emissions 19 tons. Older people from the UK, Norway, Finland and Ireland are also among the top performers. For example, Norwegian seniors have significantly higher emissions, 12 tons, than Swedes, 7.4 tons, and Danes, 10.2 tons. Older people emit the least in Romania, Lithuania, Hungary, Croatia and Estonia. Although the distribution of emissions between age groups has changed, all age groups have reduced their emissions between 2005 and 2015. What is encouraging is that young people are leading this trend. People under the age of 30 reduced their annual emissions by 3.7 tons over the period under review. Those aged 30 to 44 reduced their emissions by 2.7 tons, and the 45 to 59 age group by 2.2 tons. People over the age of 60 saw the smallest decrease, only 1.5 tons.